Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four of Salesforce Labs Live. This online series is designed to showcase some of the newest free employee built solutions to hit the App Exchange marketplace. Each episode highlights a different lab solution and its respective owners. You'll hear from the experts themselves and discover how these solutions can help you solve some of your most common business challenges. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mariana Torres, and I am an evangelist for the Salesforce Labs program. My role is to keep you up to date of the newest free employee built solutions to hit App Exchange. And of course, everybody's favorite slide. As you all know, Salesforce is a publicly traded company, and we ask that you please make all buying decisions off products and services that are currently available. So before we dive in, let me speak to you briefly about App Exchange. App Exchange is the world's leading, most trusted enterprise cloud marketplace and offers more than 7,000 apps and experts to help solve your most pressing business challenges. Each app is pre-built and leverages the power of the Salesforce platform, so you can get started faster with easy integrations right in your Salesforce environment. And now, aside from these thousands of amazing partner solutions, App Exchange also offers solutions built by Salesforce employees. These solutions are known as Salesforce Labs. We currently have a roster of over 500 solutions that can help you solve problems, learn new skills, and adopt new technology. Many of them also have their source code available on GitHub, so you can extend and customize them to meet your organization's unique needs. And now, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our special guest, Josh Damon. Josh is a solution architect here at Salesforce and a labs builder by night. Today, we'll be discussing his solution, Data Fetcher, and how it can help you simplify your screen flows and provide an optimal experience for end users. Josh, can you take a moment to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, thanks, Raina. Uh, as you said, my name is Josh Damon. I'm a solution architect here in professional services at Salesforce. Uh, so my daily, my daily role is helping uh, our, our customers um, via Salesforce implementation, uh, leading large enterprise implementations of the Salesforce platform across various different clouds and industries, and uh, making sure that our customers' uh, Salesforce projects, um, or if they're new to Salesforce, that we're, we're setting them on the right path uh, to utilize the tool. Um, but uh, what that's what I do on a daily basis. Uh, on the side, I, I really enjoy uh, creating uh, Lightning Web Components, I'm a big proponent of uh, Salesforce Flow. Uh, so I actually had an opportunity leading up to uh, Trailblazer DX last year to kind of help uh, showcase uh, reactivity and screen flows. Uh, so that's where Data Fetcher or Data Fetcher came into play. Um, and what that component does is it allows you to dy dynamically retrieve uh, records uh, utilizing a SQL statement um, into a screen. Uh, so for example, I can have a user typing into text boxes or selecting options from a pick list that helps me build a SQL query and then return all of those records in a standard out of the box data table, for example. Um, kind of what we're seeing here in this GIF is I'm, I'm choosing different options in one data table or another data table and then eventually when I click next here and on my next screen after I've made some updates, it uh, is gonna show those results in that top upper right-hand corner there. Um, so all based off of user interaction, I'm showing a different set of records um, as the user's interacting. We'll see more when we get, when we get into the demo um, on different use cases, but uh, just really kind of highlights the power that we're gonna have here um, that the flow team has really developed and, and put into our hands. And, um it was really fun building this and uh we we originally i originally did it to support the team that showcase this showcase this at trailblazer dx and then uh we said you know what customers would love this 
<laughs> and uh, so far that has been the result. Um, and uh, we decided to put it on uh, Salesforce Labs. One up here. Um, I actually had the opportunity to give a uh, presentation on Automate This um, in the fall. So I'm going to use a very similar flow to what I demoed there. Um, but uh, basically, our scenario is is a lot of times I, I did this when I was an admin. I sometimes might do this when I'm an architect. Um, where a customer might have a requirement of like, hey, we, I have my reps that want to be able to easily see all their different opportunities um, and maybe interact with those opportunities, make changes, do things like that. Um, but, you know, our reporting format's a little bit clunky. List view is just not going to solve what I need to do because I have specific filters that I want to do. Um, so a lot of times we might build a screen flow. Uh, to guide a user through those types of interactions. So in a normal in a normal screen flow prior to reactivity and prior to data fetcher, what I would have to do is I would have to first get, um, I would either first, first thing I would probably do is just add a screen to where I'm going to tell the, give the user some options to filter out the opportunities that we're trying to get to. So I might say, okay, select the state and then select the industry like, like I'm doing here, but then the user would have to click next. And once the user clicks next in my flow, I'm going to have a get step where I'm going to get all of the opportunities based off of what the user did on that first screen. And then I'm going to add another screen where the user is going to then see a table of all of those opportunities. Now, if I want to change that view, I would have to click previous or I have to click next and restart my flow, or I have to loop the user back to that very first screen and it can become complicated as my flow grows and I'm doing more and more and more and more things. This flow could probably easily spin out a little bit out of control. However, what if I'm able to just give the user the option to set for their filter and then display those in real time as the user's interacting with the screen? And that's kind of where data fetcher comes into play. Um, so let's 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 debug this first. Um, people that know me know I like to debug things first because I always love to see what my flow is doing um, in the back end, just kind of like as a best practice as an admin or an architect or developer. Um, so we'll debug it first. We'll see what, what the flow does, and we'll look at how all of this is configured. Um, so let me go ahead and debug here. So my flow. Very simple, I'm gonna ask the user what state they wanna return opportunities from, um, also what industry they wanna return their opportunities from, and then we're gonna show them all into a table. Um, so Data Fetcher does run in user mode, um, like all App Exchange apps, we, security is a big thing. Um, so it does run in user mode, so I'm only gonna see the records that I have access to. I'm not gonna see, I'm not gonna see your records, for example, because I don't have access to those. I'm only gonna see the ones that I have access to. Um, so I, I do live in Arizona, so I am, uh, I'm going to choose Arizona here. Um, and then for industry, we're going to start with energy. And then based off of those two interactions, Data Fetcher went and retrieved all the records where the state, the billing state is Arizona and the industry is energy. It returned those into a record collection that I'm using in my data table, where I set the columns. But on top of that, I'm also using an aggregate query to then do a sum of the total amount for those opportunities that Data Fetcher returned to me as well. So I can do two things here that I would have needed either a combination of multiple formulas, multiple get steps, multiple screens, all on one screen. Uh, just using a couple cool little things, uh, one from Data Fetcher and then also the reactive part um, that's now uh, GA in uh, Salesforce flows. Um, so I have a, I created a unique uh, label that's going to show that total number that we're getting there from my aggregate query. And then, uh, yeah, each of the accounts. Um, and like I said, this is, this is entirely uh, reactive. Um, where if I were to change um, banking, I probably don't have any opportunities in banking in this industry set for Arizona, for example. But uh, I might in electronics, I do, yeah, electronics, and we see that this value has changed along with the records that are showing in my data table. Um, 
So nothing really too crazy. Uh, so let's kind of see how that gets configured. Um, and configuration is it's, it's fairly simple. Uh, so in my flow, I do have uh, two pick lists, two out of the box pick list components, uh, one for state, one for industry. And then I've added my data fetcher component. Uh, this um, is configured very similar to a lot of different uh, components that, that you have in Flow. Uh, we're going to choose the API name. Um, I'm going to choose which object uh, that I want to return records for. So in my use case here, I was doing opportunities. And then there are two other inputs that we have uh, here. We have an aggregate SQL query. Like I said, um, I'm using the aggregate SQL there to do a sum of the opportunity amounts. Um, and then my SQL query, which is actually going to return those records into my data table. Um, right now, um, in winter 24, um, I do. I am using a formula uh, to build those queries uh, because formulas are reactive compared to a variable is not reactive right now in uh, in flow. I, I do believe that's on the roadmap, but safe harbor there. I don't know. Well, officially, I don't work on the product team. Um, but coming in spring 24, I can actually build these same queries in a text template. Text templates are uh, are reactive, so it'll be a little bit easier configuration once uh, once spring hits everybody's orgs. Um, but let's look at my formulas real quick. Uh, for those unfamiliar with, with SOPL, Salesforce has excellent documentation in our help docs on, uh, on, um, on our, uh, developer site to help you build that SOPL. Uh, so once again, this is my configuration here, um, object API name, my two queries, that I'm going to run my aggregate query, my query formula. Let's see. Look at my formulas, my aggregate query. This is this can be this is probably one of the biggest daunting tasks that I see people that are either new to SQL or new to formulas inside of Flow is is building this to where it's going to be reactive and I'm getting the data there. Uh, formatting is key uh, because when we talk about SQL, when we talk about strings, we have like single quotes versus double quotes and things like that. But I, I try to do my best to give you good examples in the documentation that we see in the app exchange listing. Um, so I do have some examples there as far as like how to build out these formulas. But like I said, spring 24, we, we probably won't need the formulas too much anymore because uh, uh, text is, uh, is going to be, uh, text templates are reactive. Uh, so my aggregate query here, like I said, it, it is uh, selecting the sum of the amount from the opportunities where I'm looking at the accounts billing state and the accounts industry um, from the opportunity record, which is really cool here, which is really kind of brings that power of SQL into flow because I'm able to do cross object queries uh, criteria in my query. If, I, if I'm using a standard uh, get records inside of flow. I can't do that. I can't reach across uh, from the opportunity to get the account object and do my get based off of the, those values there. However, using SQL, I'm able to do that. Um, so really cool, a uh, little piece of functionality here that, that data fetcher extends to you when you're building out your screen flows outside of the direct reactivity piece. Um, and then my actual query that I'm using to return my records, very similar. Um, I'm going to choose the fields that I want to return uh, from my opportunities. And then uh, I'm setting that where clause where I'm saying my billing state is equal to the state that I chose in my pick list. My industry is equal to my industry. Um, so very actual, very, very simple configuration, but in this use case, but it can grow and grow and grow. I know I have some users that have, you know, 20 different options that they're choosing in that screen that are returning records. Funny enough, my current project that I'm on right now, I have a very robust search screen to return records um, based off of things like locations and some other related records and things like that, that normal flow would require multiple get steps, multiple filters, multiple loops in order to get to the criteria that we want to. But in real time, I'm in, uh, near real time, I'm able to return those records on one screen as the user's interacting with the different search filters and criteria in order to get those records. 
just really enhancing that overall user experience to make adoption easier, to help close that case quicker, help close that sale faster, um, just really enhancing that experience overall. Uh, that is where Data Fetcher is today. Um, I can give you guys a sneak peek of what I have in the future as well. Uh, so give me just a second to share that app. Yeah, so, all right, so uh, Data Fetcher 2.0, what, what's different? Um, I have added a uh, custom property editor uh, to the component to make it a little bit easier. Uh, so here, we're gonna choose our object name um, and we see these same two it, it outputs, but now we actually have another option here is the show, show SOSL. So Data Fetcher 1.0 supports aggregate SOQL and SOQL queries. Um, I've extended that functionality to also include SOSL. Um, when I choose SOSL, I now can actually return up to two, rec two different record collections with two different objects. Um, so in this case, I could do accounts and opportunities uh, to return into uh, one or multiple tables. Um, or I'm sorry, into two, di two different tables. So as my user's typing in uh, into a text box, so there's, they're typing in edge, for example, not only am I gonna return edge communication accounts, I might also return all opportunities that involve the, te the text edge. Uh, so really expanding that even further. Uh, when we talk about accounts and contacts, I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for. Let me go ahead and just type this in and return, you know, two different record collections. Maybe it's leads and contacts. Um, I don't know if Josh is still a lead or if he's been converted yet. Let me go ahead and type in Josh Dan and see if there's a lead or a contact with that name. Um, and I can return all of that into a data table. Um, and then on top of that, I can also still include my SQL query and my aggregate functions all on one component, um, all there. Um, and uh, return all of that. And then, you know, if I don't need SOSL, I can hide it and I'm just concerned with the, the values that I need um, all within here. So this is all being built out. Um, I have uh, some bugs I'm not ready to, to talk through yet, but we'll just leave this here so people can kind of see what's what's coming soon. Um, if you are interested in beta testing, find me on LinkedIn or Twitter. I'm happy to get it into your sandboxes or dev orgs to test and provide feedback. Josh, thank you so much for joining me here today. For all of our viewers, Data Fetcher is available for free right now on App Exchange. Check out the description for the installation link, as well as more resources you can explore to learn more about Salesforce Labs. We do value, value your feedback. So if you try out the solution, please let us know about your experience by leaving a review on the App Exchange listing. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about Salesforce Labs, feel free to check out these resources. The first one is the main landing page on AppExchange. This page lets you explore our wide roster of apps, components, and flows. It's your main gateway to our very large catalog. And of course, you can also find Salesforce Labs on X. Follow us under the handle at AppExchange to stay in the loop of our newest apps and offerings. Keep an eye out for all things labs related under the hashtag Salesforce Labs. Thank you all for joining me here today. I'll see you soon for episode five.